Welcome back everyone, I'm back here with Lee Kennedy and today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to be talking about ceramic coatings, one layer versus two layer and specifically around our crystal serum light and EXO. Now normally we sit here and have a, a chat don't we Lee? We do, yes. Today it's classroom time and Lee's going to show us on the whiteboard exactly how these coatings work and take us through the technology and the reasons why they are engineered and why they're engineered. Yeah, so how our top coat and base coats works and why you need a two layer system. Let's go. Okay. Okay, so I want to talk you through the different types of ceramic coating technology and how they work. So if you look at these little circles I've drawn here, what these represent is paint molecules. So it's obviously a massive oversimplification of how things actually work, but it's a good way to view it. So these would be the molecules that make up the the top coat of your, your car's paint surface, which would be a, a crosslink polyurethane or urethane acrylate, some sort of organic polymer. Now, previous technology, so I spoke of XOV4, this was this type of thing, it's referred to as a, a quartz coating. So the way a quartz coating works is it will build up a layer of ceramic molecules on top of the painted surface like this, which are chemically bonded to the paint. So you have a, a layer of ceramic coating and then the paint underneath. Now our new coating, so XOV5 and Crystal Serum Light, these are classed as composite coatings. And one thing they do is they, they key into the paint surface and actually go deeper into it and actually react with the paint. And what they, happens here is that they start building up discrete layers of chemically different molecules throughout the paint layer and that build up a surface like this. The older technology, the quartz, reacts with itself and will crystallize. So if you pour some into a Petri dish, it will form a crystal and you can actually take that out and look at it. Whereas this won't. It will form a semi-crystalline substance, but it's still quite soft. It needs to actually react together with the paint molecules to form the new substances to form a fully crystallized coating. So what are the advantages of this? So as you can see here, there's gaps between the, the, the quartz um, molecules and groups of molecules. Um, and this is something we've validated by looking at the two different coating systems under a scanning electron microscope. So we've actually got images of this uh, sub-microscopic level where we can see the structures that form. So we know this is what is happening. So with a coating like this, this can clog up with dirt and grease, which is going to reduce the efficacy of your um, coating. It's going to reduce water beading. It's going to in increase dirt sticking to the coating. It's going to make it harder to clean. And it's going to reduce the shine and the gloss of your car. With here, physically, there's less pores within the coating. So there's less opportunity to get clogged up. So you'll get a minimal effect from it. So just by the, the denser structure, you're already getting a better level of performance. This is also, because it's a denser structure, it becomes more scratch resistant, which is very important. And as well, because of the way we've tailored the substances in there, they give a lower surface energy. So this is the non-stick firing, firing pram principle, where nothing can stick to the coating. So this is the difference between quartz coating and our newer composite technologies that we've brought in for XOV5 and Crystal Serum Light. So following on from this, I want to talk about what actually makes up a ceramic coating, what chemical substances go in there, and what's actually happening on the surface of your car. So there are two main substances, which is silicones, or more specifically, polysiloxanes. So these are ceramic polymers. Polymer is a very long chain molecule. As you can see, it's silicon linked with an oxygen to a silicon, and that can form very long chains. So it's in the bracket here, and that just means that can repeat and repeat and repeat as many times as it wants to, to form a very long molecule. On the side of each silicon, I've denoted an R group, and what an R group is, it's a, it's a different chemical group um, that in this case is very reactive. So these are designed to react with each other 
to form more chemical bonds as the coating system starts to work. We also have silica, which is SiO2. Now, some people will talk about SiO2 content, which isn't really that relevant because that's a confusion between the silicones and the silica. Because this isn't SiO2, it's got silica and oxygen in it, so you can see where the confusion comes from. But it's actually the nature of these two um, substances and the way they use within the coating that gets across how it works rather than just content. If you had a, a coating that was 100% silica, it'd just be sand and wouldn't be very good. So the way a coating actually works is, so as I said, these are long molecules and without all the detail there, they would kind of arrange themselves and look a little bit like this. This would obviously be a three-dimensional structure rather than two-dimensional as on the board, but again, this is just a, a simple representation of what's going on. Now, these R groups, as I said, are very reactive chemical groups that will start forming bonds with each other and different parts on the chain. And what they do is they link together the chains, and this is called cross-linking. So, common example of cross-linking is vulcanization in rubber. So that is a cross-linking reaction. So rubber is made up of, again, long chain-like molecules. In the case of rubber, it's going to be carbon molecules rather than silicon and oxygen. And then they link together to form this sort of cage or ladder-like structure, which gives physically a much more robust structure than you would have previously. These chains as they are would be very flexible. As you can imagine, they can move about in space. Whereas when they're tied together like this, it'd be much harder than to move about, so they become much more rigid, which in ceramic coating is what we want. Now, silicones, siloxanes, are incredibly hydrophobic. They repel water. They also repel dirt and oil, very chemically resistant. So there are properties that you want from a ceramic coating, but they don't give the necessary level of scratch resistance. So this is where the silica comes in. So silica, which is the main component in sand, in glass, and is also used in the little desiccant pouches you get in some foods. It's incredibly hard, incredibly scratch resistant. Um, so what we do is we take nanoparticles, which is a particle that's between one and 100 nanometers, which is a, a billionth of a meter, um, and then we infuse this into the coating system. So what you'll get is, you'll get small silicon nanoparticles building up within these gaps, within the siloxane cages. So this now makes the, su the surface much, much more scratch resistant because you're making it much denser and much harder than it was previously. So why is scratch resistance so important? What we're mainly looking at here is the, the micro scratches and marring that you put into your car when you do a contact wash. Because what that will do is, if you have a perfectly flat surface and you shine a light onto it, the light will reflect at the same angle that it, it came down at. And if it was a perfect gloss surface, you would get 100% of the light come off. In re reality, anything over 90% is a very high gloss surface. And that'll be, you know yourself, if you've polished your own car, if you've taken your car to a, a credit detailers, when it comes out, it's gonna look phenomenal. When the light hits it, the color's really gonna pop. Now, if you're putting tiny little micro scratches in you're roughening the surface what that causes is that when the light comes down it spreads out over a wider area so if this is your observation angle you're getting much less of the original light shine directly into your eyes in this case so that makes the paint look dull um, much less shine much less pop much less depth of color so by adding the silica nanoparticles we're stopping the, the scratches being built up within the paint and we're maintaining that freshly polished look. The downside of this is that silica is very hydrophilic, so it attracts water. As I mentioned, you get the little 
desiccant pouches within food that is designed to draw moisture and water out of the air to stop that effect in the food around it. Because the silica, especially when it's got a high surface area, is going to actually draw moisture from the air. So when you add silica nanoparticles, you're increasing the scratch resistance, but you're decreasing the hydrophobicity and with it the cleanability and the dirt repellents. So what we would always advise is to use a second layer system where you, again, apply a coating that's based on, on silicones, on siloxanes, that again will cross-link to form these cage structures. But now the top layer has far fewer silicon nanoparticles in. There's still some in there. There is in all of, of proper covalently bonded um, ceramic coatings, but we use far less in here than we would do in the base coat because the top coat is there for your water beading, your hydrophobicity, dirt repellents and cleanability. We have this two coating system. This gives you your cleanability because if any dirt, so if you were to put a drop of water on there, that is gonna bead up. Whereas on a surface like that, so if we had the, the same situation here with just a base coat, we have lots of silicon nanoparticles in, very hard, very scratch resistant, but the water is gonna spread out because each of these silicon nanoparticles is gonna attract the water. Whereas these silicones will repel it. And that is why you get water beading. So as a summary, that's why you need a two coating system. You'll never get the same level of performance from one because you'll either lose out on scratch resistance or you'll lose out on cleanability and water beading. Wow, that was really technical. Thank you, Lee. Um, that's perfectly okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea was to get it across how the coatings actually work at a sort of molecular level, just to give our customers a better understanding of what they're putting on the cars. And hopefully now they understand the difference between a one and a two layer system and how yeah. one might be a compromise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if there's anything that we've missed, feel free to drop a comment below.